Well, here we are. It's October the 10th. It is a Tuesday. Yes, you're seeing me at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. A little bit earlier than, you know, you might think. But this week I have a week off from my job, thankfully. Uh, well, my primary job, anyway. Still trying to figure out, you know, what to do for the secondary job. Um, but, yeah, I don't really, really want to do all that. I don't really want to waste my voice. I was sick all weekend and everything like that. I was sick for, like, Wednesday all the way until till Monday, really. And I'm still feeling I'm still feeling the effects. Again, it takes me a lot longer to recover from illnesses and stuff now. I have to remember and everything like that. But, yeah, Cristobal. Mario Cristobal made a massive, massive mistake. And, you know, I mean, how do you not kneel the ball at the end of the game against Georgia Tech? How do you not kneel the ball away? You don't. You, I mean, Tyler Van Dyke played like absolute trash. I mean, the running game was pretty good. But Tyler Van Dyke threw three picks, you know, not not good at all. You know, Georgia Tech wasn't, you know, their offense wasn't really doing too much. Then Haynes Kink, of course, you know, through the game where, you know, cost, cost, cost me some money, you know, on Haynes King. But you know what? It's fine. He only threw one touchdown, and that was the only touchdown that mattered. Because Georgia Tech beat Miami. Now Miami slides all the way down in the rankings, you know, to number 25. So, yeah, that ended up being the biggest takeaway from this weekend is that Mario Cristobal – no, he hasn't. He hasn't just done this one time. He's done this on multiple occasions. Remember that Stanford Oregon game, which I almost forgot. You know, from way back a couple like five, five or six years ago, and Stanford ended up winning the game against Oregon. Yeah, yeah, that big game. Yeah, big game earlier today. Forget about Mario Cristobal. That big game earlier today. Um, Oklahoma, Texas, two unbeaten, two teams with a lot to prove, and ultimately. At the end of the day, you know, Dylan Gabriel and company, they they wanted this one just a bit more than Texas did. And, you know, yeah, Texas had a block punt in this game. Yeah, Texas, you know, was able to make a few, you know, drives stall out for Oklahoma. But when you can't stop Dylan Gabriel, you know, a man on a mission to prove himself after what he's been through. You know, that, that's a recipe for disaster right there. Again, Oklahoma could not get their own running game going with their running backs, so they had to turn to Dylan Gabriel. Um, you know, and he, he carved up this Texas defense like it was Swiss cheese. And unfortunately, Texas's mistakes, they came back to bite them severely. And, I mean, this is the same Texas team that will start very, very slow, you know, and against Wyoming, of course, who I, I have mentioned them yet, but they beat they did beat Fresno State. So Wyoming probably should be ranked, but they're not ranked this week. They might be after this week. We will find that out um, in a key unranked matchup between Air Force and you know Wyoming. So, yeah, um, yeah, Texas. You know, Quinn Ewer has made three bad turnovers. Two of them were. Really, you know, more so his fault. One of them was more on the wide receiver not catch the ball. And really, I think both of those picks were on, you know, the wide receivers just not being able to catch the ball. And then, you know, Texas, again, starting out very, very slow, like they have been all season long, just sleepwalking, you know, thinking that they're going to come out and just do what they need to do, you know, and, and not what they want to do, you know. You know, what they wanted to do was – a heck of a lot better than that. And yet, Oklahoma, last chance with 15 seconds to go. Gabriel, pass, touchdown from like four yards out. They bleed like a minute. It's like a minute drive, and it was effective. And Oklahoma will take home that golden hat and win this game and shoot up into the top five. Both these teams have a lot, have still have a lot to work on. You know, Oklahoma still has a lot to work on because they, again, um, still inconsistent. I think Texas, we know, has been inconsistent all season long, but Oklahoma's still kind of inconsistent to me. You know, you can't solely have Dylan Gabriel run for offense. And it's the same thing with this USC team. You cannot solely have Caleb Williams 
run your offense. I mean, Williams, again, had another, like, three touchdowns on the ground, one passing, and yet USC was struggling to beat Arizona. It was like three overtimes, I think, that this game went to. I ended up falling asleep due to a headache I had. Again, I was sick all weekend. You know, USC struggled 43-41, but it was a struggle win. They got it. They, they're still undefeated. I mean, you can't say anything about that. Caleb Williams has, what, 28 touchdowns on the season? Can't say anything about that. Just – and, I mean, the man's probably going to win the highest, but at this point, I mean, this just the way this man has been doing. I, I, I honestly hate to see it, but, I mean, Caleb Williams is probably, based on his production, based on what he's been able to do this year, he's probably going to win the highest. But, you know, I'm just going to say that right now. It's October, I know. He's probably going to win it unless something happens in these next few games. But, yeah. Um, Notre Dame. Speaking of USC's next opponent, they get smacked around by Jahar Jordan, and their CFP hopes die on Saturday night in Louisville. And it was just a it was just a beautiful sight to see Notre Dame, you know, lost in all the Miami, you know, nonsense, lost in all of you know the early morning drama of Texas and Oklahoma. Duke can get out in a really a heavyweight fight. Hopefully, again, hopefully Oklahoma and Texas meet again. I I, I want to see part two. Um, uh, but yeah, Notre Dame, their offense looked anemic, sluggish, terrible for most of this game. And I mean, Louisville, you know, wasn't doing the greatest. I mean, they, you know, once, once Louisville got the game over, they were just kicking field goals, you know, you know, after they ended up stalling out and it just, it just felt like insurmountable. So that score you know, in that game, which was like, what, 35 to 17 or something like that. I forgot the score already. But in any case, Notre Dame is done. Their CFP hopes are done. And it's like, I don't think I expected Notre Dame to lose this game. But again, with the way the season has gone so far, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, UCLA, um, also another really good defense. They keep Cam Ward quiet. They keep him pretty under wraps, the Bruins, they upset Washington State. So another one-loss Pac-12 team in the mix now. You know, so we got a lot. So the, the Conference of Cannibals in its final year is getting ready to start up. It's October. It's getting ready. And boy, oh boy, Jay Daniels, he is unreal. Running the ball, passing the ball, unbeaten season for Missouri comes to an end despite, you know, the fight they had, Brady Cook ended up throwing a pick six at the end, and that was it for that. Um, yeah, Tess Walker is he's eligible now, but that wasn't the only thing, you know, for North Carolina. Their their defense is actually really, really good, which is very surprising, considering this is North Carolina we're talking about here. But Mac Brown, you know what Mac Brown does. Mac Brown does what Mac Brown does. You know, Georgia, Kansas, Michigan, Florida State, they easily went. Yeah, Michigan allowed. Their first, their first ten plus point game, but who cares? They put up fifty two. You know, Florida State easily took care of business. Kansas, I'm surprised that they ran the ball down UCF's throats. Uh, Georgia easily took care of Kentucky. Like, come on now, Kentucky, Kentucky. You know, and unfortunately, Kentucky couldn't do anything. So yeah. Um, yeah, the slate for this week is interesting, you know, for all the wrong reasons early anyway. Um, you have Arkansas, a struggling Arkansas team against Alabama who took care, you know, took care of business barely, I'd say, against Texas A&M. Alabama barely beat Texas A&M. Alabama still struggling. Um, and then the top four are all in action in the early window. Yes, Ohio State Purdue is on Peacock. Yes, 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 yes. That's a thing. I know. But Ohio State, you know, struggled again early against Maryland. One thing I forgot to put in the, in the recap section. So Ohio State struggled early against Maryland, but they, they got their act together. So, I mean, you know, it's – Similar to some other teams that are just kind of sleepwalking through the season so far. Uh, but then the afternoon, highlighted by the top eight matchup. Oh, Oregon and Washington. Oh, boy. Going to be good. And then and then the 
big three networks are going to have top 25 clashes, you know, in the late window. So it's going to be real good. So, you know, going to be some real good stuff going on late. And this week again, again, so some weaker opponents are going to be played in that early window, like Purdue, like Indiana, like Syracuse, Vanderbilt, you know, but you can't get caught lacking. You get caught lacking, you're going to lose. You know, you don't want to get caught sleepwalking, so the top four teams need to put up and shut it up real quick. We have midweek Conference USA. Um, Midweek Conference USA is going to be a thing. It will happen this week, starting tonight. So get your Tuesday and Wednesday night sickos, you know, and, and have yourself a party tonight. Have yourself a party tonight. Have yourself a party on Wednesday night throughout the rest of October. So Midweek CUSA, you're here. Um, even though the Conference USA is a lot worse, you know, than it has been. Yeah, Jacksonville State's actually okay. Yeah, Liberty's still undefeated, but again, CUSA, no recognition for just about anybody. You know, nobody really cares, you know, in the national landscape of things about the CUSA right now. Um, so it'll be Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr., Oregon, Washington. Playmakers on both sides of the ball. The wide receiving core for Washington. You know, really good wide receiver for Oregon, really good running back for Oregon, Bucky Irvin, uh, Troy Franklin, you know, and then Washington, you know, the guys, Jalen McMillan, Robert, Romeo Duze. I mean, it, it, it's going to be back and forth. One of the best games of the season, I think, in my opinion, it might top Oklahoma, Texas from last week based on how this game will go because um, it's going to be that good. It's either going to be that good and we're going to get a shootout or it's going to go either way and somebody's going to blow somebody out. Or, alternatively, which I don't think will happen, I don't think a defensive slugfest will really happen in this game uh, like that. I expect I expect some scoring in this one. This is going to be the funnest game of the season so far. And it will see, it will let us know which one of these teams is ready to go over the top. Will it be Oregon? Will it be Washington? Who knows? Honestly, honestly, this is a 50 50 toss up. This is a 50 50 toss up. Um, yeah, so USC, their defense has been very suspect, but again, the anemic Notre Dame Fighting Irish and Sam Hartman are going to be their opponents this Saturday night. Um, and I don't, I don't know what in the world's going to happen here, you know. Because this this could be this could be a game where USC could lose. This is, is still you know Notre Dame is still favored this game despite you know having two losses, but USC you know at times against Arizona like especially that first half could not move the ball, and yet Arizona you know made mistakes to where they ended up you know allowing USC to get back in it, thus allowing USC to win. You know, again, Arizona was up 17 to nothing at one point. And, you know, USC was getting clowned around three and outs and everything like that. And that's the type of that's the type of defense they're going to be facing yet again. Another defense that can get them off the field, get that offense off the field, because you know, at times the offense for USC, they can Riley and company, you know, can try a little bit too hard on things. So yeah. This this is one of those games where USC has to really, really step it up and put the fork in Notre Dame. They have to put it in them and really stir them up. They have to win this game, USC does, in order to gain more respect. I, I, I'm sorry, I just don't respect USC right now. Like, like if they went up against Oregon and Washington right now, that defense would have to get carved up and Caleb Williams would have to go Superman. He would have to have eight touchdowns against Oregon and Washington in order to win that game. I'm just being real. So, yeah, really going to be interesting to see how that game goes. Drake May quietly continuing his march, you know, with with Mac Brown and the Tar Heels and that defense for North Carolina has quietly been doing good things all year. Remember, they sat Spencer Rattler, what, nine times? 
in the opener, and Tyler Van Dyke, he has to play better. The whole Miami offense has to play better. You know, if you can't put away Georgia Tech, then what makes you think you're going to do anything against Drake May and company? We will find out, but, you know, we the Miami Hurricanes have to prove something. You know, they have to prove they want to be this team that's, you know, you know, a little bit better and, you know, their only good win, you know, against Texas A&M looks a hell of a lot worse now, now that they've lost to Alabama. And then another Pac-12 showdown, you know, is going to be really, really key. Dante Moore, who's kind of been struggling so far, really. Um, Carson Steele, really good running back. We've been talking about him, I think, a couple times over the past couple weeks. Jay Michael Sturdivant, um, really good wide receiver, main wide receiver anyway. And then, you know, the Bruins. Going up against DJU, DJ Uli Lagale, Navy Martinez, really good running back, Anthony Gould, the wide receiver that has been stepping up for the Beebs lately. I think this will be a defensive slugfest. This will be the defensive game that Oregon Washington will not be. Really good defenses on both sides of the ball, and we've been seeing that throughout the season. You know, UCLA, you know, their their offense at times, you know, can't really do too much. You know, they they he only scored seven against Utah in that loss. And then Oregon State, you know, they got smacked around by Washington State. They were still able to score a little bit, but, you know, they still got smacked around. So, you know, uh, this this game is going to be a defensive slugfest in my opinion. And, yeah, that's all I got to say for week number seven. So, um, yeah, so week seven. It, it's it's good. It's gonna be a good weekend of football. Um, it will either be sometime Saturday or sometime on Sunday. I'm thinking like eleven thirty on Sunday, but we are going to talk the arena indoor landscape tomorrow, uh, or probably around the same time. We'll be talking, you know. The good old stuff in the NFL, but Saturday night, sometimes it may be more like Saturday morning, you know, or Sunday after the London game. We're going to talk some arena indoor football. We got a lot to talk about there. Um, there's a lot of things I want to say. There's a lot of things I need to get off my chest. And we've been waiting. I know some of people have been anxiously waiting for me to say something about it because I've really been kind of silent on all this. There's other people, you know, in this sphere that have been saying things, you know, not it, not everything's completely true, not everything's completely false, but some things, you know, the egos and stuff of the people in 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 the sport of indoor arena football. It, it's it's something. It's something sometimes. So. Um, my thoughts on everything so far, because there's still stuff being announced as time goes on this week and everything like that. So a lot of things are, are, are coming to a head as we march to November, you know, schedules are going to come out soon and everything like that. And yeah, so, um, more of my thoughts on the arena indoor game will be on Saturday or Sunday morning. So take care. I'll see you all around the same time on Wednesday to talk to the NFL. And Big Boy Sports is going to see you all later. Peace.